What's up guys, welcome back to the shop. So on this quick tech tip episode, gonna be a super simple one. So I have this collar here and I also had some brass bushings for the go-kart. And it's almost perfect to fit my steering column I have. It almost fits, but it just doesn't quite go on. You could probably hammer this thing on and get it to go on, but it's not gonna be easily adjustable. So the easiest way I have found to enlarge these holes rather quickly, um, without anything fancy or any uh, special tools. Just need a socket, a drill, and some sandpaper, sticky back sandpaper. Let's go over to the vise and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right guys, over here at the vise, um, we've got the collar clamped in there. Um, all you need is, this is just a 3 8 socket extension that I cut the end off that would go into the socket wrench. Um, I use this thing all the time for uh, like say a small engine, you have a small engine that's got a pull cord on it, lawnmower, chainsaw, whatever, and the pull cord breaks off, you can take off the pull cover, um, pull cord cover, and then you can find whatever socket fits the side of the motor, and you can chuck that up into your drill, like so, and then start your motor. Um, it's also gonna work in this instance really well. We just have a uh, 12 millimeter socket, deep socket. It's a little loose in there. And then we have this 80 grit sandpaper. I use this for block sanding cars, getting the, the rough cut on the Bondo. So we just take off a little bit of it. It's sticky back, so it sticks onto the socket and we just wrap this around the socket. Pay attention to which way you wrap this because you wanna run the drill so that it wraps it on top of itself. If you go the other way, it's going to unravel. So the way I wrap this, we're going to have the drill going in reverse. To get it kind of halfway started in here. And then we just run it up and down. You can wallow it a little bit. Go up and down a few times if you have to. You can put a little more sandpaper on there if you gotta take a lot off of something. And then you basically just get it to where that collar will slide down there nice and easy. It's pretty damn good. I'll probably take just a smidge more off of that. Okay, and that's all we do. Uh, we used this the other day uh, for the setup bearing in the rear end. So we did that exact same process the other day with this setup bearing for the 12 volt rear end. This is the big bearing on the pinion. Uh, let me think about that. This is actually the small bearing on the pinion, the front bearing on the pinion that presses down on there. But it needs to have some, some shims behind it in order to get the proper uh, depth for it. And so we wanted to make a bearing that was tight but could slide on and off. And we just found a socket that fit in here if you don't have sticky back tape, you can use a just regular sandpaper and then just tape it onto it, you know, wrap it around a couple times around the socket and then wrap the paper over the top of the tape so that it grabs. And that worked out really well just to machine just a little bit of material out of both of these surfaces so that um, we have a little bit looser clearance so that we can get it on and off nice and easy and we don't have to fight it the whole time. So. That's what I've been doing the last few times I've had to do this. It's worked out really well. And I think it's a good little tip to help you guys in the shop when you're just barely got an interference fitting and you need it to just be a little bit looser so you can slide it on and off. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one.